that input devices will entail those devices which are used to key in or enter data into a computer. So when I talk about output devices, I now talk about the other side of components which are used to display data or generate output in that regard. So we have three key output devices, the monitors, the graphic plotters, and the printers. So I want us to go deeper and understand what is these monitors, what are these plotters, and what are these printers. So I'll start from monitors, since these are the key output devices in any computer. So these monitors are normally known as VDUs, or what we say, visual display units. So the word visual display unit VDUs can be used instead of com computer monitors or computer screens. Now, a general aspect to understand when it comes to monitors is that the way images are formed by screens is through joining of small dots known as bezels. So when you join the small tiny dots known as bezels eh, and arrange them in a rectangular form, then it forms the images needed to be displayed on a paper or come up in form of a soft copy output in a computer screen. So whatever an image that you see is actually formed by joining these small dots known as pixels. So the sharpness of an image or the clarity of an image is dictated by the number of pixels. So with that, this takes us to the two different types of viewing screens. The visual, that is the visual display unit known as cathode ray tube and the other one which is known as flat panel display. So those ones are the two main categories. Now, the CRT monitors, you know, are the traditional kind of viewing screens, which you know, with the advent, for example, of televisions, you realize that they have something like an amp going uh, backwards like that. So that, that is what we would uh, form on uh, uh, the CRT, that is the cathode ray tube. And that is actually what really makes this Thing known as a cathode ray tube type of a monitor. So it is somehow traditional kind of a screen. And uh, we have moved out of this cathode ray tube to a generation of flat panel display. The reasons bringing in, in these uh, challenges in the CRT monitors is a uh, large power consumption of power requirement, that's energy requirements. Again, uh, the sharpness of the image as a, that is due to clarity in terms of uh, the sizes it supports in terms of pixels. Eh? So you realize that TCRT monitors could be able to support 80 characters or essentially 25 lines vertically. At the end of the day, you realize that it supports only a few number of pixels, which means that there's no clarity compared to flat panel display. Now, other disadvantages is size. Because of that extension backwards, again, it, uh, it has large size high power requirements. This is the screen we're talking about. This is the CRT monitor. The other one is flat panel display, where we are currently. These are the displays we talk about when we have watches, when we have the smartphone devices. All these ones are using something known as flat panel display. They have reduced volume, weight, even power requirements. Again, you can hang them on the walls, where on the wrist and many, many others. These are the monitors we use when you are playing uh, uh, PlayStations and even graphic displays, the ones which you must have seen in towns eh, for purposes of advertisements. All those ones, we use flat panel display. This planet, uh, flat panel display is subdivided into two, emissive and non-emissive, which you need to be very clear on that. When I say emissive, I mean, those devices converting electrical energy into light. An example is LED or light emitting diodes. Non-emissive display are those displays which use optical effects to convert sunlight or light from other sources into graphic patterns. An example is LCD. So tomorrow you need to be very clear when you are distinguishing between emissive and non-emissive. Emissive to mean using electrical energy. Non-emissive, meaning that converting light or sunlight from other sources into graphic patterns. And you have seen the example of non-emissive is liquid crystal 
device or liquid crystal display. Right. Now, this takes us to printers. Whatever we were discussing are actually soft to copy output. You will be able to read on the disadvantages. Kindly read advantages, disadvantages of, uh, and characteristics of those types of displays, the monitors and flat panel display. Now let's discuss now the other side. This is the hard copy output. Whatever we've been discussing is soft copy output. Now this is what we receive as uh, printed handouts, for example. This is what we get from printers. So a printer is an output device which works on the principle that it must use a paper. You know, output is in form of a hard copy in and realized on a paper. So there are two types of printers, impact and non-impact. And I need you to be very careful because we will mix printers. So on a broad categorization, we talk about impact to mean those kind of printers which actually generate an impact. And the reason is this, printers actually work with uh, hammers. The conventional printers actually have hammers, but the non-impact printers do not have hammering. So out of that process of hammering, eh, we would uh, generally term it as impact printers, since there is that hammering process. Physical contact, generating a physical contact with the paper, that is actually why we would regard them as impact printers. Non-impact on the other and are those ones which are using relatively different technology from the impact printers. Now, let's discuss on these impact printers. Now, impact printers, as I've said, actually as a armoring process. And uh, the making of the impact printers as it is works on a uh, on a principle of a, a material known as a ribbon, so that the pins, remember this armoring actually has pins, you see? So this spindle has pins, which is rotating. So these pins will be hitting on the ribbon, then the ribbon hits on the paper. So when I say impact, it is as a result of this impact generated from the pins hitting on the ribbon, the ribbon pressing on the paper, and then forms the required writings, you see? So when you come across the word impact, kindly understand there is a material known as a ribbon. A ribbon is like a carbon paper, if you have seen a carbon paper. So that if I write some writings, it duplicates itself on the paper. So general characteristics of these impact printers is that they are very low consumable costs, generally very noisy, useful for bulk printing when you want to do a lot of printing. But I'll later on discuss characteristics cutting across. Let me not go into individual characteristics so that I not mix you. So uh, when I talk about impact printers, as you've agreed, there are those ones which actually have pins which press on the ribbon, then presses on the paper. Again, these printers are divided into two, line printers and character printers. When I say character printer, I mean a printer which prints one character at a time. Examples are dot matrix and daisy wheel. The word dot matrix comes in from the way the arrangement of pins has been done so that it has matrix of pins. Remember matrices in mathematics. So now this one is matrices of pins, which are arranged order in a, in a, in a specific order, having characters. So when I press a character, then that character has the required pins. So these pins will be pressing on the ribbon. The ribbon now will press on the paper. But from the word dot matrix kind of a printer, it has actually matrix of pins, you see? So it is made up of matrix of pins. So once the, the that uh, shaft eh, rotates, eh, then it is able to rotate with those particular matrix of pins. That's why it is known as dot matrix kind of a printer. The other one is daisy wheel. Remember I said character printers are divided into two. That is uh, daisy wheel and dot matrix. And you have seen dot matrix. Daisy wheel as it is, is uh, drawn from the aspect of a flower. Remember a flower has petals. 
so that the petal eggs, remember daisy is a flower. Daisy is a name of a flower. So the flower eggs forms the pins, you see? So the petals are actually the pins. So that once the axle is rotating, it is actually rotating something like a flower head. And this flower head contains the letters, which are required to form the writings on a paper. So once the flower head rotates, it is actually rotating with the pins. Then the pin will be pressing on the ribbon. The ribbon will be pressing on the paper. And that is how it is able to form the required writing. So I have finished discussing on character printers. That is daisy wheel and dot matrix. The other one is line printers. From the word line, it is printing one line at a time. Examples of this is chain printer and drum printer. And uh, the goodness about this aspect about printers is uh, the way it has been named is how it has been designed, owing to how it has been designed. So that when I say drum printer, I mean a kind of printer which is like a drum in shape. But now the surface of the drum has been subdivided into sectors or tracks in that regard. So these tracks have the required necessary pins of characters. So the pins of characters have been, have been arranged in, uh, on the surface of the drum so that you have the lines of characters on the surface of the drum. So that when the drum is rotating, it is rotating with these required pins. Then the pins will be now pressing on the ribbon. The ribbon presses on the paper. You see? Subsequently, the other one is chain. From the word chain printer, if you have driven a pie scholar, you understand what I mean by a chain. Same configuration like a bicycle. If you open that printer, you realize that it will work on that exact principle of a bicycle. So that you have an axle rotating with characters. So that that chain is actually chain of characters, having characters all around. Like you have A, B, C, D up to Z on a chain. So once the chain is rotating, when you press a letter like in a keyboard, for example, then it is now selecting the chain, uh, the pins within that chain, which has the characters. So the characters now will be pressing on the ribbon, the ribbon presses on the paper. Up to there, that is the end of impact printers, which we have agreed, these are the kind of printers which actually use a ribbon, you see, and as character of pins, which are now pressing on the uh, ribbon, the ribbon presses on the paper. And we have agreed these impact printers are in terms of line printers and character printers, two broad categories. Character printers are daisy wheel and dot matrix. Line printers are chain printers and drum printers. I hope that is clear. Now let's move to non-impact printers. Then later on, I should be able to give you general cutting across characteristics. Now, impact printer, non-impact printers. From the word non-impact, then it means there is no contact with a paper or any contact with a material. In that regard, we have uh, laser jet and inkjet. From the laser, laser is light. So it comes from the, it uses the principle of light. While inkjet, from the word ink, it is actually using ink technology so that it is now spraying ink on the paper rather than making the contact with the paper. So uh, these uh, laser printers eh, use laser light to produce the needed dots required to be able to form the characters to be printed on a paper. That is it. So that is laser printer. The other one is inkjet, which now uh, sprays the ink directly on the paper. You see? It sprays ink on the paper from the word inkjet. So when you are talking about non-impact printers, they are just two. Laser jet and inkjet. And you know when we say non-impact, we are saying non-impact because there is no hammering. You see, so there is no pressing of ribbon. There is no pressing on the paper. There is no direct contact, you see? So I hope you've understood what it means when I say printers. You have seen the major categorization, non-impact and impact. Now I want to discuss on characteristics. 
And for you to be able to easily understand these things on printers, eh, you need to understand from the inception of making uh, the design of it. You know that impact printers is actually having uh, pins of characters, which now presses on the ribbon, ribbon presses on the paper. The other one is no contact. Now, this drives us to discuss on characteristics of each. For example, when I say impact printers, cutting across concerns, you need to understand that uh, one uh, impact printers are very noisy. So you, either way, you can also discuss that's a disadvantage or a characteristics. So it is very noisy. Impact printers are very noisy. Why? The noisy aspect comes in from the contact it makes with that armoring process is actually very noisy. Again, poor quality output. You see, you realize that uh, because it is making direct contact with the paper, that pressing of a ribbon. Remember how a ribbon, as I said, it works like a carbon paper. I think you have seen the output out of a carbon paper. When you write an original document and you press with a carbon paper, definitely you will get something you know, of very high quality as such. So you need, you need to discuss that this one, again, uh, poor quality, again, uh, useful for bulk printing. When you want to produce a lot of documents, then this one is uh, an approach which is easier for people who want to produce bulk documents, but again, poor quality, you need to realize that. And then we have said they are very noisy. Those are the general concerns which cuts across when you want to discuss any, any of the impact printers, whether you are talking about character printers, that is dot matrix or daisy wheel, or you are talking about line printers, that is chain or drum. You need to understand that they are very noisy, useful for bulk printing, poor quality cuts across. You see? Character fonts cannot be changed. Remember that character fonts, like you want to vary the fonts, eh? it's quite difficult in these impact printers. You will be able to read the others. Non-impact yeah. printers, on the other hand, is uh, one, they are not noisy. It is useful for uh when you want to produce quality documents or what we say quality output if you are interested in quality then you can use non-impact printers that is inkjet and laser jet when you are not interested on quality on, on the on a, when you are not interested on quality quantity quantity bulk printing if you are not focused on bulk printing then you use non-impact printers so general characteristic i have said they are not noisy they produce high quality output. They are very expensive. Remember that they are very expensive. So the other one is not expensive. So cost implication comes in. Again, they print one page at a time. That is why they are also known as page printers. So those ones are general cutting concerns which need to be reflected at each. So you, are, you can read the other characteristics for the individual uh, impact and non-impact printers. I hope with that you've understood what we mean by impact and non-impact printers. So I'll not proceed much further than this. So uh, that is it. So in the next session, I'll begin from uh, memories. And I hope as I discuss this one, you still have the picture of components of a computer so that you know from this other side, you have input. The other side, you have output. We are finished input and output. Now we are coming in to the CPU. That is why you can see that in the next session, I'm coming into memories. So I'll discuss about memories, the different types of memories we'll be covering on this in the next session. And even cutting across maybe a little bit on motherboard and even up to memory units. That is in the next session. So that is it. So. I would want to end my session at that. I have recorded uh, the session. I should be able to share for those ones who might have joined late. Thank you. We can catch up in the next session, unless there are any questions. <laughs> any questions, any concerns? Where can you get the notes? Yes.
Where can you get the notes? The notes are there. I've shared uh, quite to a number of uh, your colleagues. Maybe you can ask your classroom, please. Now, what about the assignment that you, you told her the other day? No, I'll send I'll send assignments. I've not yet uh, sent the assignment. Okay, okay. I wanted us to be able to, uh, I'm fixing a few things on the portal yeah. so that you can access the assignment straight from the portal. Okay. Yes, the e-learning platform for that case. Eh? And any other concern? If, if there are no concerns, I'll uh, end the session there. Excuse me, sir, maybe just a yes, yes. few concerns. Yes? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. 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 You are somewhere noisy, so maybe you can uh, make a call. Yeah, okay. You have my number. Just call. Any other question? Okay. Any other concern, members? Wait, where is the number? I guess the class. I I can just put my number on the chat. Okay. Let's check on the chat. I've posted my number. Okay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Like I'm trying to raise my hand. Five, eight, seven.